Hallelujah. First Samuel, the 15th chapter. I have quite a few scriptures today. Just want to. Um, the Bible tells us that we're to look at the word of God. And uh, it says, come now and let us do what? Reason together. Some things you have to sort through and you have to read. Some things be happening in your life, be happening in your home, be happening in your church, be happening on the job, and you can't figure out what it is. Amen. So the Bible says, come now and let us do what? Reason, reason together. So we're going to reason this word on today, and we're just going to preach the word, and we're going to have a seat. First Samuel, the 15th chapter, verse 10. We'll start there and go through 21. Pray for me. I'll try to read a little fast on today, but I have doctored up this scripture early this morning. Amen. Hearing from God. It says, then came the word of or from the Lord unto Samuel, saying, it repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. This is God speaking. You're in trouble, amen, when God looks at us or looks at someone and God is saying, it repented him that he had made man. That means somebody is in high violation, Amen. Hallelujah. But the people wanted Saul. And it was not God's idea. It was the people's idea. So it said, it repented me, this is God speaking, that I have set up Saul to be king, for he, he is turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. Here's something that just sticks out to me. And it grieved Samuel. So we have just in this Two verses we have where God has already said that he has repented, that he has made man. And then you find out uh, Samuel, the man of God that consecrated Saul, and put him into office, says, and it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Y'all remember that song, I cried and I cried. I cried what? Y'all ain't going to talk to me on today. Amen. Hallelujah. But I cried until I found the Lord. It grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose up early, in other words, when he put his clothes on, he went out to meet Saul in the morning. And he had been up all night long. And it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came or came back to Carmel. And behold, he has set him up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came, or Samuel found Saul, and Saul untruthfully, I put that in there, said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed, or I have partially perform the commandment of the Lord. Let me put a pen right there. How many know that partial obedience is disobedience? Amen. And Samuel said, what meaning then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? Since you're testifying, why is it that I'm hearing these sounds in my ear of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, I'm going to tell you why you're hearing it, because they brought them. They brought them. I didn't bring them. They brought them. Saul, the king, is saying, they brought them. This is not my idea. This is the people's idea. This is what the people wanted. They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best. He will not take an ownership of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. What he's saying is, I'm testifying, I'm testifying properly because I'm testifying about what I did. Yeah. But I'm not telling you that I allowed the people to bring back what you told us to destroy and not to bring it into the church. 
Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he, or Saul, said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. What a question. My mother called it the big head. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Samuel and Saul said unto Samuel, still in a state of denial, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. He had direct instruction to go down and kill all of the Amalekites, kill all of the sacrifices that had been offered up to idol gods and to destroy uh, uh, Agag, the king of Amalek, he's testifying that he had did everything that God told him to do. And he said, then, by the way, I brought the king Agag back with me, which was a direct violation of what God had said. Are y'all with me so far? Am I going too fast? But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, a sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. I have some more reading here because I need to build my case for about 25 minutes and I will be through. Y'all tracking with me on today? Second Kings, the fifth chapter, verse 20. But Gehazi, here's another example. The servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving it his hands, that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after or I will run behind him and take somewhat, a small amount of him. So Gehazi intentionally and deliberately followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, and all is all well. Why are you running after me? And he said, all is well. My master has sent me. In other words, he changed his mind, which was not true. Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. Three more scriptures and I'll be done. And Naaman said, be content, take two talents. Or right. If uh, Elisha sent you and you want two of these suits, uh -huh, size 44 long, one gray and one brown, uh huh. and he urged him and bound two talents of silver. He gave him double what he had asked for. You got to watch what you ask for out of the will of God with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. And when he, speaking about Gehazi, came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. In other words, he hid what he had been running after. And he let the men go and they departed. He got more than what he wanted, but he lost what he had. I'm not gonna go any further on that. I promised on Wednesday night I was trying to save this message for today, but I told him on Wednesday night it was so juicy I had to give it on Wednesday night. Amen. So I'm going to put something on it to try to put some gravy on it. Today I want to talk to you today about the price of picking up that which is contaminated. The price of picking up that which is contaminated. 
I was reminded of the story that I read several years ago regarding the small village where the drinking water was supplied from a stream that was coming down from a mountain. And the water that was coming down from the mountain that was providing the drinking water for the village became contaminated. And the villagers began to die from the contaminated water that was coming off of the top of a mountain down into the stream. And they began to try to figure out where the contamination was coming from. Y'all going to walk with me today. And they started at the end of the stream and started working their way back for contaminants. And by the time they got to the foot of the hill, or the foot of the mountain where the water was coming over, they found a dead goat lying at the foot of the hill. And all of the water that came down off of the mountain went through and past that contain. Are y'all with me on today? They found the source. Once they pulled the source of contamination out, then all of the water became whole and well again. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Well, maybe you don't believe my story about the village. Nine years ago, right here in Battle Creek, Enbridge. We got an Enbridger over here. Right outside of his deck at his home, amen, is the river where the contamination took place right here in Battle Creek. Do y'all remember that? Amen. They had a break in the oil supply line that goes through our county. On July 26, 2010, a 30-inch pipeline belonging to Enbridge Incorporated ruptured near Marshall, almost in his back door, and contaminated the creek and the Kalamazoo River with hundreds of thousands of gallons of crude oil. The EPA ordered Enbridge to dredge the submerged oil and oil contaminated all through the Kalamazoo River. Amen. They had to buy property all along. Are y'all with me on today? I'm trying to paint a picture here in about 25 minutes, if y'all will allow me. Hallelujah. In order to get the contamination out, they had to uh, pull about 1.2 million gallons of oil from the river. Contamination is a word that can often be associated and followed by the word death. It's important that the believer understand the depth and degradation of spiritual contamination. Well, if you don't know about Battle Creek and the Kalamazoo River, y'all all know about Flint, Michigan. And the water crisis and the long-term generational contamination of the children that had been drinking the water and the families. Are y'all with me on today? Hallelujah. Only God knows the effects, the ongoing effects of all of those kind of things. So we find in the Bible, that's where I'm trying to get to now. We find in the Bible, 1 Samuel 16 and 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. He said, fill thy horn and with oil and go. He said, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. When you look at these passages of scriptures, and without going into detail, but there are several illustrations in the Bible about what happens when people do not pay attention quick enough to contaminants. If there is a contamination, there also has to be a contaminator. And the contaminator, and I just said, John 10 and 10, the thief 
cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so if there is a contamination that's going on, there has to be a contaminator. And then there has to be a contaminant. What it is that is put into something to make it contaminated. Cancer. Y'all follow me on today. Cancer is not always deadly. If cancer can be contained in the capsule, or if cancer can be contained to a specific area, and stay out of the lip noise and things of that nature, glory to God, then a person can live on. Uh huh. I'm a witness that you can live on after the doctor says you have cancer. Wave your hand, Mother Hess. She can wave her hand and say that you can live another 40, 43 or 44 years after the doctor say you have cancer. But you cannot allow a contamination to continue to grow without doing something about it. There's some life lessons here in the life of Gehazi and Gehazi wannabes. The waste and the curse that was upon Gehazi and his descendants because he had a contaminant that was embedded deep down in his spirit. And some things that people are carrying and some things that people are living saved with because they're contained in a certain capsule. And often they can hide it at times. But the Bible says you can be sure. Y'all going to make me preach here. And I, you can be sure that your sin will find you out. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what's her name? Uh, somebody said when people show you who they are, Maya Angelou, believe them. Hallelujah. Every now and then, something will pop up. Gehazi was a man of God. But he had some contaminants sectioned off, embedded, hidden down in his soul. Hallelujah. He had some issues. Y'all not going to talk to me. There's not an issueless person in here today. Hallelujah. We all have some issues. Hallelujah. And my issue is I'm trying to get this word out, and I want you to get it on today. Hallelujah. But Hazai, when you look, I've done a deep search into Jewish literature, and they don't put a bright, shining light on Gehazi like we do. Because when you look even in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, hallelujah, we find where God actually used Gehazi several times when Elisha was there and the Shunammite woman. Y'all know about the Shunammite woman. Uh, the Shunammite woman uh, came to Elisha and Elisha told Gehazi to go out and meet her. And he went out and met her and he asked, is all well? And she said, all is well, but I need something. And so Elisha, the man of God, not just a preacher, but the man of God, a real man of God, he told Gehazi to take his staff, which represented his anointing. And he said, you go with the Shunammite woman. And when you go down there, I want you to take, I need some props here today. I don't have no props. That you take the staff. You take my anointing. I'm going to commission you to go to the Shunammite woman's house. Hallelujah. Because her son is dead. And so he sent Gehazi. But the pastor knew that there was something strange going on in Gehazi. He was a prophet for a reason. He wasn't just a prophet because he wanted to be a prophet. He was a prophet because God showed him some things. And so he gave Gehazi the staff. 
And he said, what I want you to do, I want you to give you some special instructions. He said, I want you to take my anointed staff. And I want you to go down and put it on the Shunammite woman's son's face. And when you do that, he's going to come back to life. Elisha, his pastor, told Gehazi, don't talk to nobody. Don't stop in the gathering area. If it rained, whatever it may be, good God Almighty, just keep on preaching. Don't talk to nobody. Take my anointing and go and use it. And as Gehazi went to the Shunammite woman, he got caught up in himself. And that thing that was embedded deep down on the inside, greed and pride and covetousness, it began to come up. He gave everybody along the journey a high five and how you doing. I was big mama today and y'all not going to talk to me. Hallelujah. Did exactly the opposite of what God wanted him to do. Elijah was testing Gehazi to see if he could follow some simple instructions. Hallelujah. But there was something on the inside. When you read the Bible, you'll find a man by the name of Judas. He had something on the inside. Hallelujah. When you look and read the story about a man by the name of Achan, A-C-H-A-N, he had something on the inside. Greed, greed will contaminate anybody if we're not careful. Are you with me on today? When you look at the life of Gehazi, we see the value of what could have been. Gehazi was in a place, he was in a position where if he had have just followed the word of the Lord, God has some great things in mind for him. Gehazi demonstrated that there was something inwardly driving his pursuit of life, that he had a form of godliness. I wish I had a few more amens in here. But he denied the power thereof. Gehazi had been a first-hand witness. He was directly involved when Elisha told Gehazi to tell Naaman to go down and dip seven times in the river. He was involved in the anointing. God used him, but there was something on the inside that was really driving him on the outside. And when Naaman was healed of the leprosy, Naaman had brought some gifts to buy his healing, to buy his deliverance. But the man of God was a man of God. And he was not going to allow anything to interfere with what God had did. Elijah was telling Naaman, I know that you were healed when you came up that seventh time. But Elijah was saying, I had nothing to do with your healing. I just told you where to go to be healed. See, if somebody called us and tell us they got a bloody nose and we pray for them, good God Almighty, and, and the nose bleeds, stop. You don't need no credentials. Hello, somebody. Just say, thank the Lord. Oh, this is, rough. this is rough for today. Hallelujah. But when Naaman came back and tried to buy his healing, Elisha said, there's no way in the world. Take your tin suits, take your gold, take your silver, and head on back healed. But Gehazi was standing on the side. He might have been eavesdropping. I don't know. Might have had his head up to the door. Listening. But somehow he saw something that he wanted. But he got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. You see, the man of God can see some things that are contaminant that not everybody can see. That's why you have a pastor. I know God speaks to everybody. But that's why you have a pastor. 
Elijah said, there's no way we want those clothes. There's no way we want that money. But then Gehazi slipped out the side door and caught up with Naaman as he was going back and said, my pastor sent me. See what greed will do for you? My pastor sent me. We got two new students to the school of the prophets. And they both happen to wear the same size I wear. 44 long. Hallelujah. Two inch cuffs. Y'all not going to talk to me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Split down the side. Hallelujah. Sleeves on the cuffs, please. Hallelujah. God, I go talk to me. Glory to God. What he didn't know, but Elijah, the pastor, because he was the prophet, he knew that that leprosy that had been on Naaman had got off of Naaman, but it got in the clothes. And the clothes was contaminated. The silver was contaminated. The gold was contaminated. But Gehazi, he had something in mind. You cannot serve both God and mammon, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. So after several years of faithful service, Gehazi fell and became a victim of his own embedded weakness. Jesus declared in John 5 and 39, he says, search the scriptures. You can't go by what the crowd is saying. The Lord spoke to me the other day and said, I don't want you to follow the crowd. I want you to follow me. Amen. We've got to decide who we're going to follow. Right. Yeah. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. Spiritual contamination. It's caused by contaminants. Spiritual contaminant is anything that would cause an individual, especially a saved individual, a person, or a thing to become spiritually unclean. I said on Wednesday night, we as holiness people, we can never condone what God has condemned. I wish I had some help in here. I feel like I'm just a man taking a walk up here today. Hallelujah. If God said it, we've got to believe what God said. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. I didn't get saved to go into destruction. I got saved to come out of destruction. And when I got saved, I said, goodbye world, I'm gone and I won't be back. Oh my running out of time here each one of us we have to ask God to deliver us of all spiritual toxins anything that's keeping us from our destiny that God has for our lives sometimes we get stuck and we want to God well, I'm praying I'm fasting I'm seeking you I'm tithing I'm teaching I'm preaching I'm I'm faithful I'm this I'm that and we add it all up and we see a big goose egg at the bottom Hallelujah. Could be there are some spiritual toxins lingering somewhere. God wanted to deliver Naaman, and he didn't want it to rub off on anybody else. You see, when the Lord saved you, you don't give your drugs to somebody else. That Y'all not going to talk. Y'all going to make me turn sideways here. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Put Luther out. Put him out. Put him out. Don't put him in the closet. Put him out. Hallelujah. Put B.B. King out. Got to put him out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have to search ourselves. The Bible says, try the reins of my heart. He says, search me, O God. Then try the reins of my heart. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, I want you to take it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We see where Judas got to the place where he decided that he was not going to follow Christ. 
Hallelujah. And so he sold his soul. Contaminated his soul. For 30 pieces of silver. Hallelujah. And Gehazi, in his life, he conveyed Elisha the message that Naaman brought. And told Elisha that whatever it is that Naaman is looking for, that the king had sent him to Elisha. But Elisha didn't even bother to come out. I don't know if he texted Gehazi or Snapchatted him. Y'all not going to talk to me, so I'm just going to fill in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Face timed him. I don't know what he did. But he told him to tell Naaman, I'm not coming out with a prayer line in the driveway. Just tell him to go on down to the Jordan. Don't dip once. Don't dip twice. But there was some pride. In Naaman. Because Naaman, he was a general. And there was some pride in him. And he began to, the Bible says he became wroth. He became embarrassed. I brought all of my soldiers. And I come to be healed. The maid told me I, that there was a prophet in Israel. And that's what the Bible says. And I'm going to cut on through here. The Bible says what you preached on last week. The Bible says that when, when Naaman got before the king of Israel... The king of Israel, he got upset because he did not have the anointing. And so Elisha heard that Naaman was at the king of Israel's palace. And Elisha said, I know why Naaman is here. So that he can know that there is a prophet in Israel. After Naaman was healed, after he was delivered, when he came back, he spoke to Elisha face to face this time. And he said, now I know that there's a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. So Naaman from out of Syria, he came and he was healed. But Gehazi, who was Israeli, an Israelite, he got leprosy. What is that all about? It depends on what's on the inside. How much are you willing to give up? It does not matter what your pedigree is. It does not matter if you were third generation this and third generation that. Glory. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring it on in here. Elisha's goal was to keep the blessing of the message that Elisha received from God. Elisha was simply trying to protect the word of God. That's what a real pastor would do. A real pastor will stand up, hallelujah, in the face of the wolves, in the face of a Goliath, hallelujah, in the face of a lion, in the lion's den. That's the role of the pastor to stand up and declare the word of the Lord. I know my voice is loud today. We got visitors and my voice is loud. Hallelujah. Don't turn my microphone down. I want it to be loud. Hallelujah. Gehazi misrepresented Elisha as he secretly ran after that which Elijah understood to be contaminated. Naaman set up the first GoFundMe account. Y'all not going to talk to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gehazi ran after what Elisha knew was contaminated. And he tried to turn what was contaminated into a blessing. It was the same way when you read about Saul, as I read to you on today, even Achan. The Bible says that Achan uh, stole. The Israelites uh, obeyed God, but Achan, one man, brought contamination 
on a whole congregation. Achan stole a robe, some gold, and some silver, and hid those things in his tent. But again, the Bible says you can be sure that your sin will find you out. God showed them who the contaminant was. Hallelujah. And God commanded that Achan and his entire family and all of their possessions be destroyed. That's the price of contamination. Hallelujah. What does contamination cost? The Bible says that when Gehazi had leprosy, it was Elisha that pronounced leprosy upon Gehazi, and not only him, but all of his descendants. That's where we get eczema today. A skin condition. Because of the sin of Gehazi. Listen, contamination is long lasting. It can be generational. Things can happen generationally when we dabble or if we dabble and if we tamper with things that God told us not to tamper. Gehazi denied. Then he lied. But Elisha saw him. When Gehazi came back, his pastor asked him, where have you been? Might have been looking over the top of his glasses. And the Gehazi said, I've just, I've just been down to the YMCA. <laughs> Y'all not going to talk to me. And the prophet said, no, I'm a prophet. My eyes went with you. And I saw everything that was going on. And now you are contaminated. Hallelujah. Listen. We all have to search ourselves. As I said, if you find anything that shouldn't be, Lord, I want you to take it out. Sometimes you have to get away, some get away from some people that's contaminated. Everybody not happy that you saved? People looking for an easy way to get to heaven. All of these things that's going on, all of these different ideas, all of these, uh, whatever you want to call it, that's popping up today. You have to be careful. You, you, cannot, you cannot be in everybody's everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There comes a time where you have to separate yourself. And you have to say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. There is a price of picking up that. Whatever your that is. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks about the word that. Whatsoever a man soweth. What's the next word? That. Whatever the that is. That have, shall he or she also reap. So, LS, what do you, what do you stand on today? What I am saying is that, I'm saying on Wednesday night, I believe and I see that my miracle is on the way. Amen. You've got to see it before you see it. You've got to know it before you can show it. You've got to believe it before you receive it. You don't receive and then believe. You believe and then you receive. You'll be waiting the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Waiting to see it. You have to believe it. Now faith is, not faith was, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence. It's evidence. There are some things that are unseen that's evidence. That's what your faith is for. Your faith is that what kicks in. Hallelujah. When your joy gets low. When the cares of this life pile upon you, it's your faith that will take you through when your 
when your wheels are spinning in the middle of the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Y'all going to make me preach. I'm, my time is up. My time is up. How close do you want to get to God? Sometimes we want to be closer to people than we are to God. Hallelujah. I'd rather be close to God, and if I can find me some people after that, than to find me a bunch of people and then can't find God. Hallelujah. I don't believe that Gehazi meant to do all that he did. But when you harbor stuff, you got to, I start to name this message today, the price of bitterness. The price of bitterness. Bitterness will have you operating backwards. Bitterness will cause you to be angry with somebody else and you drink acid fluid hoping that they're going to die. Hallelujah. The thing that you struggle with, the thing that we carry, you got to let those things go. I was reading this morning. Come on and stand. I'm just going to cut it out here today. I was reading this morning as I was up praying and reading the word. It was talking about hypertension. Just the number one silent killer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We cannot just eat anything and everything and expect not to have hypertension. Well, I love me some sausage. Hallelujah. I love some red meat. Ain't you big on the vegetables? Hallelujah. Glory to God. But if you want your heart to pump properly, hallelujah, you got to cut back or cut out on those contaminants. If you want to be spiritual, if you want to be whole, you got to cut back on those things that come to destroy. Jesus said, I come that they might have life. That they might have it more abundantly. Lord, I just put the word out there today. Just wanted to reason on today, Lord. I want to be healed. I want to be whole. I want to be right. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want you to move in a special way. Any area of spiritual contamination, any blockage, Lord, I want you to remove it right now. Help us to set our affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Lord, help it, us to recognize and to receive the truth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to plant our feet on higher ground. Touch right now. Open up our eyes. Open up our spirit so that the spirit man will see the things of God. Lord, we trust you. We love you. We rely upon you. We don't rely upon our feelings. We don't rely upon our emotions. We rely upon the word of the Lord that changes not. Lord, we thank you today. We bless you today. We look to the hills from what cometh our help. For all of our help cometh from the Lord. And we thank you for this cleansing word. We thank you for this purging word. We thank you for this word of evaluation. We thank you, Lord, right now for your keeping power. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God.